Hello, here I have my Catalon Studio ready. Just a quick reminder, you can go to catalon.com slash download, install the tool, and follow along. Let's start by creating a new test case. Right click on the test case folder, go to new test case. Let's give it a name. For this course demos, we're going to test the search functionality of the Airbnb website. So I'll name mine, find a place. With Catalog Studio, you have several ways for you to automate your tests depending on your programming skills and experience. You can use record and playback, built-in keywords in the manual mode, or using the script mode to write your test script. In this case, I'll choose record and playback. Click on the record rep button in the toolbar, based in the URL to the Airbnb website, then hit record. It will open a browser window and navigate to the Airbnb website. Every manual action you take and every test object you click on will be recorded and turned into automated test scripts. Let's search for Atlanta. Let's say check in three days, then select search. Now I'll choose this text stays in Atlanta. For verification. Now stop recording. Here we have all the recorded steps. Everything seems good. Let's go ahead and save scripts. This window pops up, giving you the options to save these new test objects. On the right is the folder structure of my existing repository. On the left, you can see the test objects organized under a page object model. I will create a new folder to save them. Let's name it Airbnb Pages. Select it and click OK. You can further rename the pages in an object repository for better visibility and maintenance. I will rename this one to page underscore search result. And then the other page underscore search you can also quickly locate a test object by double clicking on it for instance this check-in object is in the page search folder all right i'll run this test and see how it goes What I just show you is basically how to use record and playback to quickly automate a simple test. To learn more about this low-code approach, you can check out our Kellon Studio record and playback course. Well, after finishing this course, of course. Our test run is finished and is passed. Now, what if you need to test with more test data? Let's say more cities. You can double click on the input column in this test case and change the value. Let's make it Tokyo for the city input. Change it to stay since Tokyo for verification. And let's run this again. Well, this is the first approach we've mentioned earlier. You change the value in the test case every time you want to test with new data. But it's really time consuming and seems to go against the core benefit of test automation, which is supposed to save time and resources. Alright, so this is when you need to apply data driven testing. To do this, your test case needs to use variables instead of hard coded values. Select the test case. Click on Variables tab. Select Add. This first variable is for city input. I'll name it city and type in Atlanta for the default value. Add another one used for verifying. I'll name it expected result and states in Atlanta for the default value. We use this value because the input city for searching is Atlanta. Now back to our test case. Click on the input Tokyo here. 
change the value type from string to variables. Select city for the value. And do the same for the verification step. I'll change it a bit. Switch the value type to variables and choose expected result. And don't forget to save it. I'll run this test and see how it works. It will use the default values added for the two variables to fill in the location and verify the text on the search result page. So it passed as expected. The first step is done, setting up variables. Let's move on to put this test case into a test suite and continue to prepare our data file. At the moment, the current studio version I'm using, 8.2.5, only support data-driven testing at a test suite level. However, in the next versions, from 8.3 onwards, it will also support the test case level. That means you'll be able to bind test data to both test suites and test cases, depending on your test scenario and needs. Alright, I've already created a suite here. Click Add and choose the test case to put in it. Next, click on Show Data Binding to map test data with the corresponding variables. You can see that the two variables we created have already been loaded for the variable binding. Right above is the test data section. Since we haven't created anything yet, it's all blank. To create data file, right click on the data files folder on the left. Go to new test data. Give your data a name. I'll name it 100 cities. Here we have many data types, but let's go for internal data first. Then choose OK. It will open a tab for us to work on our data. Click on the Add icon to create a new data column. This first column is for the city input. I'll name it city. For the second column, I'll name it result, which will be used for verification. After that, add in some values for these columns. Let's go for three cities. Atlanta stays in Atlanta. Tokyo stays in Tokyo and New York stays in New York. Again, don't forget to save it. Back to our suite and data binding. In the test data section, click Add, choose 100 cities data, which we've just created. Click OK. As our data has been added, continue to select Map All. It will buy the variables of the test case to the data column with the exact same name in the data file. Here it says, found one match. Look at the first city variable. It has been bound to the data in the city column. But the expected result variable is still the same. This is because it cannot find the column in the data file that has the exact same name as the variable. Our column name is result, not expected result. If it's just one or two variables, you can choose to do the mapping manually. First, choose the type. Here we have several options. Let's go over them quickly. If you leave it as default, it will use the variable default value in a test case to run data-driven tests. For data column, it will take the column name as value. For data column index, it will take the column number as value. For example, in the last value column, if I type in 2, it will bind the variable to the second column in the data file. For script variable, we'll skip this for now as it involves a variable value builder. I'll go for data column. Next, select 100 cities data. And finally, choose the result column for the value. Let's save it and run this test suite to see how it goes. This test case will be executed three times, each time for a data set, or we can say there will be three iterations. An iteration is a test case executed with a row of test data. The first test is looking for a stay in Atlanta. 
done and close. Then it opens a browser again and continues with Tokyo. Lastly, New York. All the steps are mostly the same. The test run is done. Now it's repairing the report and uploading it to Catalan Test Up. Looking at this, all the tests passed. You can see more details below under the Log Viewer tab. Run 3 slash 3. Passes 3. Failures 0. You can click on the Result tab to see the executed test report. See if I've already set up video recordings. Here, I also have an option to rewatch all the executions. Or you can click on the report folder on the left. Select the executed suite to see the same report. We have a separate course for using Catalan Studio for test reporting and test op integration. Make sure to check it out if you want to know more about working with test logs and other features for troubleshooting. Alright, that's the end of our chapter. You have learned how to use variables for your tests, create internal data, and map them together to apply data-driven testing. In the next lessons, let's try out Excel and CSV files, and also JDBC databases. I'll show you how to combine data from these sources to run data-driven tests.